A lone minnow swam through the darkness of the lake. The midday sun's rays shined through the surface, illuminating the moss-covered stumps littering the lake floor. As the minnow floated through the grainy debris of the water, it was unaware of being stalked by a cunning and quick hunter, a largemouth bass. The bass slowly glided towards the minnow, using stealth and the knotted water logs to its advantage. It made its way underneath the unsuspecting prey that continued to twitch in the water as if it were injured. The bass then stopped, waiting for the minnow to draw ever near, its gills opening and closing with anticipation, its fishy eyes locked on its small, tasty target. The minnow continued to glide forward in the water until it was right over the bass. The time to strike was now. The bass suddenly rose and opened its enormous mouth, sucking in both the water and the minnow in one quick gulp. The bass then turns to swim off with its prey triumphantly, but then felt a sharp pinch in its mouth as a barbed hook came out of its lip. The bass began to struggle in shock as invisible forces suddenly started drawing the bass upwards towards the surface of the water. Higher and higher the fish rose, unable to fight against this pulling. On the beach of Lake Octomo, Chad Baker was reeling in his catch. His friend, a middle-aged, portly, balding man, also with a fishing rod, smiled, nodding at Chad. Hey, you got him, the man said joyfully. Make sure you don't tighten too much. He might break the line. I know, Morris, Chad said distastefully. Chad knew he was the better fisherman and didn't like it when Mitch Morris tried to tell him how to fish. Morris hadn't caught anything all day, so what business did he have trying to tell Chad how to reel it in? The fool. Chad could see the bass thrashing about on the surface of the water. Oh, it was a beauty, all right. Definitely a keeper. Poor Mitch. After Chad reeled in this monster, could there possibly be a question as to who was the superior fisherman? After all, Morris insisted on using those fake plastic worms because he just didn't have the guts to pierce real ones. Catching this beast with a live minnow would surely show Mitch what a fool he was to stray from live bait. You think you're going to win? Well, you're not, Chad said, soaking in the excitement, the thrill of a fresh catch. The bass continued to thrash and dance about. Droplets of water exploded about the surface of the lake. It was becoming obvious, however, that the bass didn't have much fight left in it. As the tension on the line started to ease with every desperate attempt to escape, it was just a mathematical equation at this point. Soon, the bass would be too weak to fight and be reeled right up to the shore. Inch by inch, Chad reeled in the line. As he did, the thrashing of the bass became much weaker and weaker until it was almost beached in the brown mud where the ground met the lake. Chad reached down and lifted the bass up by its mouth. Boy! Was it ever a beauty? Chad stood there holding his prize, watching its gills open and close with the strain of being in the air. This was what it was all about to Chad Baker, the hunter finally staring his prey in the face and saying, I beat you. The prey having no choice but to accept its place in the food chain. Man once again proves his cunning over animal. The order of the universe is upheld. Uh, yeah, Mitch said, reeling in his line. 
You know, Chad, when you stand there just uh, staring at the fish like that, it, uh, it kind of creeps me out. Chad ignored Mitch for a moment before glancing over at him. Isn't she a marvel, Mitch? Isn't she a beauty? Well, uh, I suppose. You suppose? Ha! You wouldn't know what a good fish looked like with those minnows you always catch. <laughs> Mitch didn't respond to his friend's taunts. He just looked out over the lake. So what do you think? She's about a six, maybe a seven pounder, Chad said. He was once again staring, entranced, at the bass. More like a four or five pounder, Mitch said bluntly. Bah! You don't have the fisher's eye like I do, Chad said, half insulted. This is a seven pounder at least. Chad then pried the hook out of the bass's mouth and took the rod and the fish as he began to walk back towards his campsite. Just up the hill. What are you doing? Mitch said, throwing his pole over his shoulder as well and following the smug Chad Baker. What do you think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna eat it, Chad said. Isn't that what you're supposed to do with fish? Well, Mitch responded. I prefer catch and release myself. I really don't like fish, but I do love the sport of it all. Chad stared at Mitch for a moment, almost in shock. You're, you're a fisherman that doesn't like to eat fish? Man, what is wrong with you? I just, well, I just don't like the taste of fish, that's all, man, Mitch said, placing his pole against his car. But, but that's part of fishing, Chad responded, still in confusion. He reached into the back of his red pickup truck and pulled out a bag. He then threw the bag down next to the burning campfire the two had made hours earlier. The logs of the fire were starting to glow nice and bright now, perfect for a fish fry. Well, that's just the difference between you and me, my friend, Mitch said, sitting on an upturned log. You take things to the extreme. And you feel that you have to indulge in every facet of something. What? Chad said, pulling out a cutting board from the bag and flopping it on the ground. You do. In everything. Most notably fishing, Mitch said, shaking his head. He pulled out a can of chewing tobacco and began to open it. Okay. Chad nodded and then began to root through his bag again. How so? Mitch put a wad of tobacco in his mouth and began to chew. All right. Well, it's not enough to just have a normal rod. You have to go out and buy the most expensive rod that you can. Yeah? Well, I work hard for my money, and I make good money. I want nice things, and I buy them. I think you might just have rod envy, Chad said, as he winked suggestively at Mitch. Uh, are you suggesting I feel inferior because of your rod? Mitch spat a glob of tobacco into the fire as it hissed and sputtered. I'm saying I make more money than you do. I outcompeted you when it came to Shelley, and that I'm the better fisherman. And you, you just can't stand it. <laughs> he laughed as he pulled a long fillet knife out of the bag. Oh, let's not even bring Shelly into it. That was years ago, man. You married her, and that's in the past. I'm talking about your obsession with fishing, that's all. <laughs> Sounds more like you're obsessing over my <laughs> massive rod, Chad jested as he flopped the bass onto the cutting board. Mitch sighed. You're exasperating. He spat another mouthful of thick brown saliva. Exasperating? <laughs> well, I'm just going to assume that's a big fancy word. That means badass. Yeah, yeah, Chad. Something like that, 
Chad, then stared down at the bass, who was still struggling to extract oxygen from the air. Their lungs weren't meant for that. They were designed to take it from the water. It was like the old saying, water, water everywhere. But in this case, the fish was literally drowning in the air. Chad lifted up the shiny fillet knife. Then he lowered it into the back of the fish and began to pierce into it. The fish convulsed violently as Chad dug the knife in deep and began to fillet off the meat from its ribs. Uh, good lord, man, Mitch said, staring down at the filleting. Won't you euthanize the damn thing first? What? Chad said, glancing up at Morris before continuing his deed. Yeah, it's a fish, man, not a human baby. I, I know, Chad, but, but that has to hurt like hell. You could at least cut off its head first. <laughs> Chad scoffed at hearing this. Fish don't have nerves like we do. They can't feel pain. I'm pretty sure that's not scientifically right. Well, if it hurts, it would scream, wouldn't it? Chad asked. He had already filleted the left flank of the fish and was now working on the right side. The bass continued to spasm, but it was obvious its life was almost extinguished. Fish can't scream, Chad, Mitch said, spitting another glob of tobacco onto the fire. Yeah, you see they can't scream because they can't feel pain, Chad said as he lifted up the filleted remains of the bass and threw it off into the woods. Coyotes would have a good meal tonight, Chad thought. Uh, that's just, that's just ignorant, Mitch said. He rose from his stump and gathered his rod and tackle box. <laughs> Coming from the man that hasn't caught anything today, huh? Chad chuckled, grabbing a frying pan and some oil from his bag. It's not about the catch. It's about enjoying nature, Chad, Mitch said sadly. That's what I'd say if I didn't catch anything. <laughs> Chad laughed as he threw the fish fillet into the frying pan and popped it over the flames. Hey, where are you going anyway? I'm taking the boat onto the lake. Maybe I can get something in the deeper water, Mitch said, making his way towards the old rickety rowboats just off the shore. You don't, you don't want to eat some fish with me? Chad said, amused. I told you, I don't eat fish, Mitch yelled as he threw his gear into the boat. I won't recognize you as a real fisherman until you fillet and eat your own fish. You hear me? Chad yelled, even as Mitch began to row himself out onto the lake. After enjoying his fried fish, Chad Baker then rose and grabbed his fishing pole and tackle box once again. He had some hot dogs in his cooler, but the savory taste of his latest catch had caused his mouth to water. He craved more fish. Besides, somebody had to eat them. That pussy, Mitch Morse, sure as hell wasn't going to do it. And who the hell was he to judge Chad Baker for how he conducted his life? Chad made his way back to the lake shore and then impelled a live minnow right through the eye with a hook. He cast his line deep in, his expensive bass tech rod working just as he was told it would by the clerk. The minnow and the sinker made a satisfying kerplunk into the water. And once more, the game was on. Chad stared at the end of his pole, waiting for it to bob, signifying a nibble. It wouldn't be long now. He was on a freaking roll. Hell, the fish were lucky he had to go back and work tomorrow, or he'd have the entire damn lake of them in a few more days. Shelly was always riding his ass, telling him to spend more time with her. <laughs> damn bitch. Weren't those thousands of dollars worth of earrings he got for her last month 
a ticket to go fishing whenever he damn well wanted to. Chad could see Mitch floating into the center of the lake in that goofy little wooden boat of his, the moron. There was no way he was going to catch anything in the center of the lake. Not at this time of day. All the fish were going to be just off the shore. That's where they wore by God. Mitch could have another failed day of fishing, just as Mitch had failed to win Shelley's heart all those years ago. What an imbecile. Then again, Mitch's rival was none other than the great Chad Baker. So, was it really Mitch's fault to always come in second? Chad was knocked out of his thoughts, however, as he looked over at the end of his rod. It had moved. Chad then went from normal Chad to attack mode Chad. He leaned forward, staring at the end of his rod. This was the time of action. This was the time where the ninja in him would spring to life and claim its prize. At first, the rod didn't move, and Chad thought that it might have been a phantom bite, or maybe a nibble from something not worth his time. He was about to reel in the line and make sure the minnow was still on the hook, when suddenly, the rod jerked hard. Oh yeah, here we go, Chad said. He pulled the rod back, setting the hook into whatever foolish fish wanted to challenge him to the game. The rod bent and moved, and Chad realized he had a real fight on his hands. Whatever it was, was big. Bigger than that bass he had caught, at least. Wait till I land this sucker, Chad thought. Then let's see Mitch Moore say shit. The rod continued to bend, and Chad realized he had allowed himself to get too excited. Oh, come on. Come on. Don't break the line, baby. Don't break the line, he said, regaining his composure. Let it tire itself out. Then reel it in, nice and gentle-like. Chad could see the line moving through the water. It went hard left, then suddenly hard right. Whatever it was on the end of this line, it wasn't fighting, not like a normal fish. This only increased Chad's resolve to catch the beast. The mystery of revealing what it was, partially driving him on. Again, the line tightened and Chad loosened up. Let it run a little with the line. It will exhaust itself soon enough. It could be a turtle, Chad acknowledged. The weight was enough, but then again, it moved faster than a turtle was able to. He began to reel hard on the line, causing it to go tense. He reeled in another few inches. This was how he was going to win, inch by inch, like a freaking samurai, man. That's what this was all about. He was the warrior. The noble huntsman, his prey, cunning and powerful, but he was still the superior. You're mine, you hear me? Chad yelled into the water. You're about ready to get chatted. He pulled again on the rod, and for a moment, he thought he could see something moving and struggling under the water. A large brownish glob that quickly disappeared back into the darkness of the lake. Whatever it was, it certainly was no turtle. It had to be a fish. Then, the line went slack. No more tension, and a dread washed over Chad as he began to hurriedly reel in the line. Broke the line? Chad started mumbling in disgust. It broke my fucking line! His prize had escaped. Today, the samurai had been bested. The noble huntsman defeated by the fowl. He didn't even get to see what it was. That stung him the most. He didn't even get to see the face of his hidden foe. Then, however, just as he reeled in more, he felt tension on the line again. Something was still on the other end. Strangely, whatever it was had stopped struggling. In fact, it almost seemed to be swimming towards the shore in sync with the line. Chad stared into the water as he once again saw the bulbous brown shape almost at the surface. It drew nearer and nearer with every reel, and for a moment, 
Chad thought that perhaps it was just some sticks and muck that had snagged during the conflict. But then as the shape drew closer to the shore, Chad realized that it was indeed a fish, a strange, almost ball-shaped creature that he had never seen before in all his years as a fisherman. Strangely, the fish wasn't trying to fight the line, but was allowing itself to be to be reeled in? So, you gave in to the Chadster's will, eh? Chad said with a smile. Once the fish was within grasping range, Chad leaned down and grabbed the fish by its lower jaw, lifting it out of the water. It was fairly heavy, maybe about 10 pounds. <laughs> that idiot Morris would probably say it was more like seven or eight pounds, but Chad knew better. Still, it was the most bizarre looking critter Chad had ever seen. It looked more like something that you would find in the, the bottom of the ocean than in a freshwater lake. Its body was a, a dark brown in color and bloated something fierce. At a glance, it looked like it could have been a, a catfish or possibly a carp, but even that wasn't right. Its eyes stuck out of the sides of the head like milky white orbs staring up at Chad accusingly. Chad could not help but to look at the creature's face. The fish's mouth opened and closed, its gills pulsating rhythmically. You know, you are one ugly sucker, Chad said. Yet he couldn't keep his eyes off the damn thing as it dangled in his hand. As Chad stared, he couldn't stop looking at the creature's eyes. There was a, a bizarre gleam to them, as though it was thinking? Not thinking like a fish, but, but really thinking, like gears were working in its head or something. Those eyes, those creepy, milky white eyes seemed to be staring right into Chad's soul. He felt disgusted by the thing and wanted to throw it back into the water. Besides, the meat probably tasted like shit. Yet despite this, Chad could not draw himself away from the fish that continued to stare at him. It's just, just staring, staring. Chad then felt a strange wave of nausea wash over his body as he looked at the fish. He tried to move, but he was frozen in place. What the hell was happening to him? The fish's eyes continued to stare into Chad's. Then suddenly, the fish began to, to melt. No, not melt, but morph. The damn thing's face was morphing and changing. Its eyes began to sink into its head, its snout growing an almost human nose. Chad tried to move. He tried to call for help, but he felt as though his entire body was draining. Worse yet, Chad could tell what the creature was morphing into. A familiar face began to appear, where the fish's features disappeared. It was... it was his face. Chad Baker's face. The fish, it, it looked like him. Then, Chad realized that he was wrong for his own body felt different. He struggled to breathe, but his, his gills could not extract oxygen from the air. His gills? He felt himself twitching. His arms felt different now, like fins, his legs a long swaying tail. The fish had not morphed into him. The fish had switched bodies with him. He was now the fish and the fish was now Chad Baker. Chad was now dangling by the hand of his former body, held stiff by the lower jaw. He looked up into his eyes, or the eyes that were once his. He could tell that the body snatcher seemed to be just as surprised as he was about the switch. Hot damn, the body switch spell worked, the fish said. In Chad's body. What? What the hell? Chad tried to say, but his words did not escape his fishy mouth. Let me tell you, friend, the body stealer said, 
lifting Chad in front of his face. Don't you ever break a gypsy girl's heart. Chad continued to convulse in the hands of the body stiller. Get, get out of my body, you, you freaking fish. Chad tried to say, but the words would not come. Yeah, man. The body stiller continued while he pulled out the hook from Chad's lip. Let me tell you, all the movies and stories you hear about gypsy curses, they are 100% right. This, this isn't happening, Chad said. This, this isn't real. One day, you go to sleep thinking everything's all right. And the next day, bam, you're waking up at the bottom of a lake and eating worms. Get Get the hell out of my body! The body snatcher smiled smugly. But I learned a spell or two from that bitch. I learned how to perform a body switch myself. I just nodded off. This is a dream. Chad tried to reason with himself. You see, when I first was hooked on the line, I was all like, Oh no, this isn't good. I kind of started freaking out a little bit. You know what I mean. Wake up. Wake up, damn it. The body snatcher shook his head as he glanced at his arms for a moment, admiring his new body. But then I realized, hey, this may be my shot at getting back into a human body. I've been in this damn lake for, well, far too long. You understand? Oh, oh, please. This, this can't be right. Chad continued to convulse in the body snatcher's grip. I see, I'm, uh, white now, but, uh, I can get used to that. The body snatcher chuckled, then he grabbed his crotch with his right hand while holding the fish Chad with his left. Mm, looks like my package is, uh, well, it's a little smaller, but hey, at least I'm not a fish anymore. <laughs> Am I right? Oh, oh yes, sorry. Too soon. You, you body stealing son of a bitch. The body snatcher chuckled. Though uh, I can't hear what you're trying to tell me, I'm certain it's probably not too polite at this point. But hey, don't feel bad about it. You got quite a few years left in you. Granted, you don't do anything stupid. The body stiller then reached into his pants pocket and pulled out Chad's wallet. He opened it up, staring at the driver's license and the contents of the wallet. Chad tried to shake himself free, but found it difficult to gain any sort of leverage while hoisted in the air. Let's see here. Hmm, he said while looking at the wallet. I'm Chad Baker now, huh? Ugh. What a lame-sounding name. Uh, but judging by my credit cards, you must make good money. Then suddenly, the body snatcher glanced at the picture of Shelly that she insisted Chad carried around with him. Is that your woman? The body thief said, licking his lips. Damn, son. That's a delicious-looking bird you got right there. I'm sorry. I mean... I got there. You, you keep your hands off of her, Chad tried to say. But again, all that happened was his mouth opened and closed. I think I'm going to go home and ride her all night long in celebration. You know, really give this new body a workout, the body thief said as he lowered Chad into the water. Once Chad hit the water, he felt a cool rush roll over his gills, and suddenly he felt rejuvenated. He struggled himself, breaking free from his former body's grip, and swam away from the shore, but remaining high enough in the water to see the body snatcher walking away, leaving the expensive rod and tackle box along the beach. Get Back here with my body, you asshole! Chad tried to yell in his mind. The body thief 
pulled a set of car keys from his pockets and was memorizing the address on Chad's license. Oh, uh, a little tip before I head off, he said, glancing back at Chad in the water. Get out of my body, you fucking asshole. Chad began to thrash about in the water, causing splashes all around him. If a source of food seems too convenient, avoid it, the body snatcher said as he opened up the truck door. Come back here, you body stealing coward. Chad continued to splash around in the water. He could see the door to his truck shut as it started up. No! Chad screamed in his mind. No! Get back here with my body! The truck then drove off, meeting with the gravel road that led out away from the lakeside. Chad continued to thrash about, splashing in the water violently. For all the good it seemed to be doing him, he could see the dust dying down from the pickup truck now. The body thief was long gone. Bastard! Chad cried, continuing to thrash about. Fucking bastard! He floated along the surface of the water, then glanced at the beach. He could see a, a large black lab rushing towards the shore in his direction. Behind the dog was its owner, an elderly gentleman that had come to the beach for some rest and relaxation with his pets. The lab, having seen Chad, suddenly began to sprint into the water, its large, teeth-filled mouth drooling happily. <laughs> oh shit! Chad screamed as the dog snapped over at him. Chad retreated under the water, barely avoiding the canine's teeth. It was clumsy going at first, as Chad wasn't exactly sure how to work his new fish body. The lab continued its assault, nuzzling through the water. Back fins, side fins, back fins, side fins. Chad yelled to himself as he began swimming into the dark depths of the lake. He made it far enough down that he was certain the dog could not find or reach him, though now Chad felt so very alone, surrounded in a dark world of water. He tried to swim forward, but kept getting the pattern messed up and ended up swimming around in circles like an idiot fish. Chad Baker once bowled a 260 in bowling. Chad Baker can learn to swim like a fish, he said, while finally gaining the pattern needed for water locomotion. He was in an alien world now. He could see lights sprinkling in from the surface shedding lights onto the lake bottom in little beams. The bottom of the lake was covered in debris, logs, muck, old tin cans, and even what appeared to be the rusted out remains of a car. Chad slowly swam forward, looking at all the debris. In the cartoons, when a human was turned into an animal, he could speak with other animals and get help. That's what Chad would do. He'd go on a merry, magical adventure, get his body back, defeat the villain, and be better off because of it. He just had to find some water friends. As he swam through the water, he could see a large catfish, about 20 pounder by his guess, swimming along the bottom of the lake. It was picking through the scum, trying to find something to eat. Chad merrily swam down to the creature, though the catfish seemed to give him no heed. Hello there, Chad said to the catfish. My name is Chad. Who are you? The catfish didn't respond. It just continued to nuzzle around in the muck. I'm lost, you see. And uh, I was wondering if you could help me out. Maybe take me to the fish mayor? King? Again, no response from the catfish. Either it was being rude or it didn't understand. Duh. Well, screw you then. Chad doesn't need you. Chad said, swimming towards the surface of the water. Catfish were dirty people anyway. He would be better off finding a fish that didn't eat muck. It didn't take long, as Chad could see some perch swimming towards the surface. Now perch seemed like a classier sort of fish. They will surely help him out, Chad thought, as he swam towards them. Uh, excuse me, 
Chaz said. I'm, uh, I'm new around here. Perhaps you can tell me what's going on in the lake? As he drew near, the perch suddenly became aware of the much larger fish that was swimming towards them and bolted off. Wait! Chad said, trying to swim after the perch, but it seemed that the smaller fish were much more swift in the water. This, uh, this isn't like the cartoons at all, Chad said as the perch disappeared. Then suddenly, the loneliness fell over Chad the fish once more as he floated in the center of the vast cold lake. He was the only sentient fish here. It wasn't like the cartoons. Not at all. There would be no zany magical fish kingdom. No fish mayor. Chad didn't even know why he thought about that nonsense to begin with. As Chad swam through the water, he felt the pangs of hunger start to wash over him. The body snatcher must not have ate recently when he was in the fish form. In fact, that's probably why he went after the minnow, the thieving fiend. He was probably already back at Chad's house, doing awful things to Shelly, using Chad's body, using Chad's... Uh, using Chad's rod. No, can't think about that right now, Chad thought. He had to get something to eat. It seemed that there wasn't anything to eat. At the mid-level of the lake, there were some perch, but they weren't small enough for Chad to consume. Chad went to the top of the lake. As he rose, he could see what appeared to be, ooh, a grasshopper struggling at the surface of the water. Though Chad never found eating bugs to be an appetizing concept, for whatever reason, he felt a, a great urge when looking at the struggling bug. As he moved, it sent ripples throughout the water that only seems to increase how appetizing it appeared. Chad felt his fins moving as he started to glide upwards towards the squirming body. It looked so good and helpless. Chad felt his fishy heart race as he was nearly on top of the small squirming creature. Just before he got to it, however, a perch darted past him and snagged the grasshopper from the surface. Yeah. Hey! Asshole! Chad yelled back at the perch. That one was mine! Though Chad knew, his words were wasted on the perch, if he was even really making sounds at all. Chad saw another opportunity, as a dragonfly landed on top of the water, its legs spread out for buoyancy. Chad began to swim quickly towards it, though he could see another perch heading towards it as well. <laughs> Not this time, Chad thought, as the perch tried to swim past him. As it did, Chad rammed into the perch, knocking it off the side. All state football, punk! He yelled, surpassing the perch and nearly to the dragonfly. Chad opened his mouth towards the surface of the water. His prey was in his reach. Then suddenly, the dragonfly flew off as Chad splashed across the surface of the lake and came back down under the water. He glanced about confused. Okay, let's try this again, he thought. Then... He saw another dragonfly land on the surface of the water. And again, Chad started to swim towards it. He came closer and closer to the dragonfly. Then, he bursted towards it with his mouth gaping open. But like before, the dragonfly flew off before Chad could swallow it. They're messing with me, Chad thought. Then he began to swim distastefully towards the bottom of the lake. Chad Baker wasn't going to be made a fool of by some goofy-looking bugs. He could find better prey elsewhere. As Chad descended, he could see and feel the water getting darker and colder. He was almost in the dead center of the lake, he imagined. As he made his way to the bottom of the muck-covered lake, he could see the catfish were still trolling the bottom for food. He could also see countless trees and gnarled logs littering the bottom, swimming between the roots of an overturned tree. Chad could not see anything that seemed particularly appetizing. He tried to eat some of the slime at the lake bottom, but that just turned out to be gross. He tried to eat some moss, but again, it wasn't very palatable. Whatever sort of weird fish Chad was, it needed protein in the form of living creatures. Chad then noticed something dancing in the water, almost swaying with the current. As he drew near, he could see it was a small, tasty-looking worm. It still seemed to be alive as it continued to convulse and move through the water. What luck, Chad thought. It looked very appetizing to him, but he better hurry 
or one of those greedy perch assholes, or maybe a bass, would come along and gobble it up. As Chad sped towards the dangly worm, he began to remember what the body snatcher had told him. Something about avoiding food that was too convenient. Though Chad's hunger was too great for caution, he had to have a bite. He had to eat something, for the hunger was like torture. As he drew near to the worm, he could see what appeared to be a, a large jagged rock in front of it. His mind began screaming that something was wrong. Regardless, he was nearly to the worm now, but as he was almost within biting range, he couldn't help that something just wasn't right. He swam in front of the worm for some time, staring at it. It looked harmless enough. All Chad had to do was swim forward, and then Chad saw the big picture. It wasn't a worm at all. He had read about this trick when he was younger, something in his biology class that he usually napped during. The worm was actually the tongue of a snapping turtle. It used this trick to draw in hungry fish. Then, snap, Chad started to swim backwards, but he was still too close. The snapping turtle lunged its large head towards him, but Chad just barely dodged the attack. The snapping turtle then snapped at him again, this time snagging the tip of his right fin. Chad started to thrash about in panic as the turtle began dragging him down. This was it, Chad thought. He was going to be gobbled up by a wily snapping turtle. Chad continued to tug, then felt the tip of his fin rip off and he was free. He quickly swam upwards as the turtle snapped at him one final time. Not today, my friend. Not today, Chad yelled at the hungry turtle as he safely made his way towards the surface. Though the tip of Chad's right fin had been ripped off, it was mostly aesthetic damage and didn't seem to slow his mobility. Despite this, Chad was still very hungry, but now he was also very fearful of the bottom of the lake. He decided that his chances would most likely be better towards the surface. Now that he knew he could scare away the perch or block them, maybe he would try for another bug that fell into the water. As Chad swam towards the surface, he saw another glorious opportunity, as he could see the small shape of minnows darting about the water above. Now minnows he could eat. Chad carefully swam underneath the minnow, who were busy themselves on the particles of plants that floated through the water. Chad knew that an ambush attack was the best course of action. He slowly drifted towards them, knowing that any sudden movements could scare them away. Then, with a burst of speed, Chad slammed into the school of minnows, opening his mouth. As he did, he felt water and objects disappear into his gaping wide maw. He had done it. He had snagged some of the minnows in his mouth and swallowed them whole. The minnows darted around him before regaining into a group. Finally, things were looking up for Chad the fish. Maybe he could learn that body switch technique as well, and then he would find someone else to inhabit. He then bolted towards the school of minnows yet again and opened his mouth. As he did, he felt some of the small critters get sucked up into his maw, much to Chad's satisfaction. He was a fisherman after all, and now it seemed he was a fisher... fish? He looped back around towards the minnows, oblivious of the long dark shadow slowly swimming in his direction. Again, he swam through the school, and again got a mouthful of food. He could feel his belly filling up with every bite. He wasn't a small fish after all, and he needed quite a bit to satiate his hunger. Again, he swam towards the school of minnows, gobbling up another two or three as he did. It wasn't until he turned around for another pass that he suddenly saw the shadow. As he looked through the murky water, he wasn't certain what he was seeing at first. At a glance, it seemed like a, a waterlogged log or stump floating through the water. But as he looked closer, he suddenly felt realization that the log wasn't moving with the current, but of its own independence course. As it drew closer, Chad noticed that it was about 10 feet long, much larger than even himself. He paused for a brief moment before swimming backwards away from the torpedo-shaped object. As he swam, the object seemed to hone in on him and then it swam faster, matching him. He felt a horrible realization rush over himself. It was a goddamn alligator, Gar. 150 pounds at least. He could clearly see the elongated head and the predatory eyes locking upon him. 
The guard blurred through the water, like an arrow straight towards Chad, then opened its mouth that was filled with countless sharpened teeth. I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! Chad screamed in his mind as he turned and began to swim away. In the open water, Chad was doomed. He knew this. The gar was built for speed and power, and Chad was just a, a chubby little fish with buggy white eyes. He could sense the alligator gar gaining on him. Without some shelter fast, he would be doomed. Chad wasn't a quitter, though. He didn't quit when he wanted Shelly. He didn't quit when he won the Junior League golf tournaments in his state, and he wasn't going to quit now. Though the alligator gar would have been terrifying even if Chad was still in his human body. As a fish, the gar might as well have been death itself. Chad could feel the water behind him being displaced. His bulbous eyes, though ugly, allowed him to see partially behind him. And all he could see was the enormous gaping maul of one of the largest freshwater predators in North America closing around him. Gotta dodge, Chad thought. Then suddenly, he pulled hard to the left. The gar's teeth snapped shut just by Chad's side, and he was now right next to it, so close that he locked eyes with the brute. The gar sped past him and began to arc back around for another go. Get to the bottom. Gotta, gotta get to the bottom. Chad mumbled to himself in terror. As he swam down, he could see a large mouth bass cruising through the water, looking for its own prey. He didn't seem to notice Chad or the hungry predator behind him in the darkness of the lake. Perfect. He may not be as fast as the other fish in the lake, but he still had human intelligence, and he knew that the gar would eat whatever food source was in front of it. Chad swam towards the bass. He could feel the gar gaining on him from behind. As long as the bass didn't realize the danger, it could be a distraction. Chad shot past the fish, and as he did, the gar's jaws clamped onto the bass's body. This spot Chad some more time as he could see the log-covered lake bottom just below. The gar made short work of the bass, chomping it down into chunks, then swallowing it. But a six-pound bass was not enough to satiate a creature well over a hundred pounds. Again, it began to descend towards the stout, pudgy, tasty little thing that was Chad the fish. The gar's mouth opened once more but now Chad was at the bottom of the lake where he could have the best chance of survival. He suddenly dodged forward as the gar crashed onto the bottom of the mucky lake. It thrashed about, kicking up debris, then resumed chasing after Chad. Chad began to swim through the pieces of the lake bottom, the logs, the stumps, the rocks. He even went through the cab of the rusted car, going through the passenger side window and out the driver's side. The gar followed behind, having no difficulty swimming through the cab as well. Chad could feel the gar gaining on him again. Up ahead, he could see an overturned tree, its roots creating a web that would be difficult to navigate, especially for something as large as the gar. He had to chance it. He had to chance it. For in a straightaway, the winner would always be the gar. Chad began to weave through the web of roots, and as he did... He felt the gar crashing into the root forest behind him. He swam up out of the root's entanglement. As he spun around, he half expected to see the gaping maw of the gar closing around him. Instead, he could see the gar, hopelessly entangled in the roots of the tree, thrashing about violently to get out. You got nothing on me, Chad said, laughing to himself. I was fourth in state, long distance running, back when I was in middle school, you twit. Despite his gloating, the gar was beginning to work itself free of the roots, and Chad knew it would eventually escape, though he would be long gone. Luckily, the gar only acted on hunger and not vengeance. It would find something else in the lake to feed upon, as Chad started back towards the surface. Again, Chad felt hunger pains across his body. The chase had taken a lot of energy energy that needed to be replaced. Chad looked around, trying to find another school of minnows to feed upon, though he could find none. He wearily swam through the water. The excitement of the chase was now dying down, leaving in its place once more that horrible sense of loneliness for Chad the fish. 
Chad thought about Shelley. Would she have seen through the body snatcher's deceit? No, of course not. Why would she? It was all so fantastic. Chad had trouble believing it himself. One morning, you wake up, Chad Baker, best fisherman in the States. Then, by the end of the day, you're a fat little fish, swimming around in the darkness, so very alone. He wondered what Mitch Morris was up to. Ah, <sighs> Mitch Morris, Chad thought sadly. Half the time, he annoyed him, but right now Chad wished he could just speak with his friend. His only friend, Chad realized. No one else hung around with him for very long. Chad always said it was because people couldn't handle feeling inferior next to him. But the sad truth was, Chad was a jerk. And nobody likes a jerk, no matter how successful they are in life. Yet for some reason, Mitch stuck around. Maybe it was because Mitch always thought if he hung around long enough, he would get his chance at Shelley. No. No, it was time for Chad to see reality. Mitch hung around him because him and Chad had been friends since they were in school. And despite all the name-calling, the mockery, the times that Chad had made Mitch feel like he was nothing, Mitch still had loyalty to his friend. Wait a minute. Mitch, Chad thought. That's it. Mitch, he was still on the lake. Chad would find Mitch and somehow communicate with him about what had happened. Mitch being the great friend, he would then go to his house and make that body snatcher change Chad back to his former self. He just had to find Mitch and figure out a way to communicate with him. While concocting his fantastic plan, Chad suddenly noticed something fall into the water just above him. It was a worm. A big, plump, juicy, red worm. What luck! It must have been dropped by a bird into the center of the lake. Things were once again looking up for the Chadster. Once his belly was full, he could concentrate on reaching Mitch. He knew the lake well enough and the spot where Mitch liked to fish on the bank. That's where he would meet him. Chad the fish began to swim hurriedly towards the worm. And what luck. Not a damn perch in sight. The worm continued to sway and bob in the water. And though Chad had never thought about eating a worm in his life, right now it might as well have been filet mignon. Opening his mouth, Chad swallowed the plump red worm. However, just as he bit, the worm bit him back. Chad felt a sudden sting in his lip as he saw to his sheer terror a bright metallic barb sticking through. No! No, 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 no! Chad screamed as he felt the hook set. Oh God! No! Already, the line was beginning to tighten, and Chad felt himself being reeled towards the surface of the water. He began to thrash about violently, trying to unset the hook, but with every gyration, it only seemed to ensure the hook was set deeper. Maybe he could break the line, pull hard enough against it. That's what he'd do. Chad started to swim hard to the left, then to the right. As he did, he felt the line cut him some slack, and he ran with it. But before getting too far, the line tightened again, halting Chad's progress. Whoever had snagged him knew his fishing tricks all right. He was trying to tire Chad out, but he wouldn't let the fisherman win. Chad began to thrash about even more violently. He'd rip his own damn lip off before he allowed himself to be brought up like this. He knew the rules of the game. He knew how it was played, and he knew what to do to get off that hook. Again, Chad tried to force himself down, tried to break the line, or rip his lip, but both seemed incredibly durable. If only he was closer to the bottom, he could wrap the line around a log. Then there would be no way the fisherman could get him, though the bottom was too far down now, and there wasn't enough line. Chad felt his body weakening, as the line began to tighten and lift him up towards the surface. No, 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 Chad screamed, renewing his struggle. I am not going down like this. Not, not like this. With every inch reeled in, Chad could feel his resolve weakening. He could now see a large black shape in the water above him, even larger than the alligator gar. It was the bottom of a boat. I'm not going to get caught, Chad thought. I'll rip my lip in half before I do. 
Yet despite this, his fishy upper lip proved to be more durable than he had hoped. Though he had tore a hole into his lip, the hook was still very much set. The line continued to reel in as Chad rose higher and higher to the surface. With every inch higher, Chad's range of movement and options were lessened. This was how it worked. The fish's best chance of escape was when he had the most line to work with. Now he was entering the points of no return. Chad gave out one last desperate attempt to escape, but he felt his fins grow tired as fatigue had overcome him. And suddenly he felt a hand grab him by his bottom jaw and lift him out of the water. The air world was now a bizarre, alien place to him and it chilled his scaly body. He could feel water dripping off of his fins and tell back into his watery home. He just wanted to be put back in the water now. His gills strained, but he could not breathe. Oh, and Chad says you can't catch fish with plastic worms. Mitch Morris laughed, holding Chad in the air. Wow, you're an ugly cuss, aren't you? Mitch, oh God. Yeah, Mitch, you have to help me, buddy. That this, this dude, he stole my body and put me in this fish. Chad yelled, but all that came out was some glubbing noises. Mitch carefully removed the hook and the fake worm that Chad was certain was the real thing when it was floating through the water. Well, I can't wait to show Chad what I caught, that arrogant bastard. This guy's gotta be at least 12 pounds, Mitch said, putting a stringer through Chad's gills and out his mouth. Mitch then placed Chad back in the water and tied the stringer to the boat as he started rowing towards the shore. It was as Chad thought. Mitch was completely useless to him. He'd have to figure out another way to get his body back. However, it was very fortunate that Mitch was the one that had caught him. After all, Mitch was very strict about catch and release, so this would be a lesson well learned once Chad was thrown back into the lake. Once back at the shore, Chad felt himself once more lifted out of the water, still dangling on the stringer. Mitch Morris looked over at the shore and the abandoned tackle box, an expensive bass tech rod lying on the beach. Hey, hey Chad! Come check out this weird-looking fish I caught, Mitch yelled, though predictably, he got no response. He's not there, Morris, Chad tried to say while on the stringer. He's at my house, screwing my wife right now. Morris didn't hear. He began to walk back towards the camp and then noticed the missing truck. Ah, uh, the truck's gone, but his stuff is still here. Morris mumbled. Mm, guess he had to go pick up something in town. No, no, I'm, I'm not. I mean, he's not coming back, Morris, Chad said. But again, he was the only one that could hear his own voice. Morris pondered for a moment, then suddenly sighed. Oh, well, I'll show him what's left when he gets back. What? What? What's left? Chad mumbled to himself, concerned. What? What do you mean, what's left? You, you can throw me back in the water now, Morris. Chad felt the stringer removed from his mouth. He began to open and close his fat, fishy lips, trying to gasp for air. M Morris, I, 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 I need to get back in the water, man. I, I'm suffocating, Chad pleaded. Again, Morris didn't respond. He sat down on the ground next to the blood and scale-covered cutting board. Then he placed the twitching Chad onto the board, and Chad felt a sudden, horrible panic begin to rush over him. M Morris! Hey! Hey! Wh wh what the hell are you doing, man? Chad tried to say, but all that came out was... <coughs> Mitch picked up the shiny, slender filleting knife, staring at it for a moment as if contemplating what to do next. M Morris? Chad screamed. Morris, you don't even like the taste of fish. S stop! Well, 
Chad did say he wouldn't recognize me as a true fisherman until I caught and ate my own fish, Morris said as he stared at the gleaming blade. Oh God, Morris, Morris, no, stop. I, I was wrong, you hear me? I, I was wrong, Chad screamed as he saw the glistening blade lowering towards him. You're already a great fisherman. D don't let what I said get to you. Morris, Morris, stop! Chad the fish began to convulse violently on the cutting board, but he was held down fast by Morris. He then felt a horrible stinging pain in his back as the fillet knife began to pierce his scaly hide. I seen Chad do this a hundred times. It should be a piece of cake, Morris said as he began to cut into Chad's body. Oh, God. Uh, Morris, you're killing me! You're killing me! Chad screamed as he felt the knife begins to fillet the meat right off of his ribs. Right through the back, along the ribs, make certain to get every piece of meat off the bone, Morris said to himself as he continued to cut. <laughs> Morris, stop! Stop! Chad continued to yell, but his pleas went unheard. Chad looked around at the cutting board. He could see his own blood and scales littering the surface of the wood. His entire body convulsed as he saw a bloody flank on his right side flop down next to him. He felt the cold, late day's wind blowing across his exposed ribs and organs. M Mitch! He gurgled. Sh Shelly! Then suddenly, Chad felt himself flopped over to his other side, blood rushing across the cutting board. He felt the knife fillet deep into him once again as he opened his mouth in sheer terror, but not a sound could come out. Finally, in those last moments, Chad knew he had been horribly wrong as the blade began to painfully slice through his flesh. As Chad the fish breathed his last breath, he realized that just because a fish can't scream doesn't mean they don't want to. The End